It'd be I Feel the Rain. We sing a song about the rain and we talk about how the rain comes down from heaven above and pours out upon each and every one of us and each and every one of us has the ability to reach out and touch the Lord. The Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of God for we have access. We have access to God. So let us come boldly to the throne of God. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus that you be glorified. Lord, in everything that was done from the beginning of this service to the end therein, Lord God, that there was freedom in people's hearts, freedom in people's lives, and Lord, that there was nothing done out of order. All things were decent in order. I pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we feel that holy rain falling down again upon us. Lord, let us quench not your spirit, Lord God, for we know that in today's society, society, if we don't hold on to the things that are true, if we don't share those things which are true, Lord, there's a generation that will be lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it rain in our hearts today. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bible, you'll want to turn with me. I was talking about the rain and how the rain comes down. And uh, how many of you have ever had it rain and you went, man, I wish it quit raining. I'm sick and tired of rain. I want the sun to shine. I don't want the rain. I don't need the rain. I don't desire the rain. I want a sunshine. I want to be out there in my yard. I don't want mud in my house. Hello? Every now and then, every one of us has had one of those thoughts, whichever one it was. And in the midst of all of those thinkings, one thing we got to realize is, what does rain do? The Bible tells us in Psalms, the 126th Psalm, the fifth verse, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And that's where I believe that song comes from, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. Let us have much to give unto God. Let us lay the sheaves at the foot of the cross. Let us come to that place in our lives where we realize that we have done the work of God as God has called us to do. How many of you feel called of God to do a specific thing? How many of you feel called of God to be a good Christian? How many of you have been called of God to reach out to a, a world that's lost and gone astray? We have things happening today, even in our church world, that we need to pray with much tears. There should be weeping. There should be sadness in the heart of those who know the truth because the truth sets you free. Who's going to go to them and sow? Who's going to go to them and sow? You may not like the idea that it rains some days, and you may not like the idea that it's pouring down rain and you're going to be walking in mud, but there's only one person who's rejoicing in that rain, and it's the man who's planting seed. If you're planting seed, you know how important it is for it to rain. I looked at this saying of scriptures, which took me back to Matthew. And this is basically uh, the crux 
of where I'm going today. I have many notes, but I don't usually stay on them, do I? Uh, so I'm hoping I don't shoot too many missiles this morning, uh, but I stay somewhere close to my line because you know what? I do feel the rain. And it's burning in my heart the things that God has prepared for us if we'll but listen and we'll hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have a generation that's saying, you know what, I don't need another religion. I don't need religious people. I need the truth. I need to know that when I'm prayed for, it's by someone who believes that God's going to do it. There's a lot of people out there who are in doubt. A lot of people who fear doing the things that God has called us to do. Reminding me of a tent revival I had over at our church in Nampa when I was there. And a man came and my sister-in-law was pregnant at the time. And she was not of season and she began to go into labor. And as she went into labor, I was called to go into the church where they had taken her. And when I went in there, there she was, and she was literally going into labor. And I was freaking out. I'm not a doctor. Hello? And maybe there's another word, but freaking out was about the best thing I can say about that. I, 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 I don't want to deliver a baby. Uh, I'll leave that to the baby deliverers. Hello? And I knew it was not season for her to have that baby. And I told this lady, I said, go out there and have them pray or she's going to have this baby and it's not going to be right. And she went out to get him to pray. She went to her pastor and her pastor said, well, don't worry about it. Just calm down. We don't want to disturb the man while he's preaching. And I said, well, he may not want to disturb him, but we're going to do what God wants us to do. And this is the church God called me to. And I left the church, went out into the tent and I said, excuse me. When we can't pray for those who need prayer, we don't need another sermon. Amen. And I began to tell them the situation and that whole church erupted in prayer. And we saw her quit the labor. It stopped right then, right there. We need to put feet to our faith and say, God, now is the hour. This is the moment. Let it rain down upon us the power and the glory as the Holy Ghost moves in our lives. You see, some pastors won't even talk about the Holy Ghost, let alone let him have control of the service because they can't control it. Oh, no, it's out of order. It's not normal. I can't get everything to go my way. You know what? I don't want it to go my way. I want it to go God's way. If God decides to go this way, I want to go that way. If man decides to go this way, I'm going that way. Hello? I'm going to do the will of God whether anyone else does or not. I don't have to worry about whether it happens or not. What I have to worry about is that I have the faith to believe that God can do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think. If God can do it, then He'll do it now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changeth not. And I began to look at the scripture in Matthew, the 13th chapter, and I began to see something. I shared with you just a minute ago briefly about the man who had come to a place in his life where he needed the rain because he was planting seed. What are we planting today, church? When we receive an offering for missionaries, we're planting seed in the Spirit. And we're planting seed to get those out there into the highways and byways, compelling them to Christ. 
We're planting seed, church. Let it grow with God. Let it be sown in joy. And there may be weeping for the moment, but joy comes in the morning, church. How many of you have ever been blessed because you blessed somebody? Well, that was a few of you. That's sad. How many of you didn't want to because you say anything because you thought I'd trap you? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Okay. The third verse. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. The birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched and became. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But, you know, the Bible tells us that he gave us his spirit. And he is guiding us daily to do the will of God in this day and age but others fell on ground good ground yeah I'm with you it fell on ground good ground and I began to look at that and I began to see something here and it yielded a crop When Zion travails, she'll bring forth children. There is a plethora of things we can do, but the most important thing you can ever do is fall on your face before God. Get your own life straight before you start working on somebody else's. And when you get that taken care of, go out and help others to find Christ. I didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. I have had ministers who would not pray because they felt that if they prayed and it didn't happen, then they would lose their credibility with their congregation. Boy, that silenced the crowd, didn't it? The sad thing about that is they've lost their first love. They've lost insight into the power of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. He takes care of things for us today. He brings comfort to the those without comfort. He brings joy to those who don't have joy. And He multiplies and multiplies and multiplies those who are sowing good seed. You see, I looked at this and the seed goes out and as he scatters the seed, some does not take it all. But that doesn't mean he quits sowing. He doesn't look and go, oh, that's stony ground. I won't, I, I, I just won't put any there. Oh, well, there's thorns there. I won't put any there. And I know the types and shadows and all that. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about the literal here in agriculture. He took the seed and he spread it out. For somewhere along the line, there would be seed that would fall on good ground. Don't go out there trying to pick who you want to get saved. Go out there and do the will of God and let Him do the work. It's His job anyway. When I hear a man who doesn't have the confidence to believe God for healing, 
and he's worried about his credibility, I consider that a hireling. Someone who can't and has lost his way with God. He doesn't realize that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think. God can do anything but fail. I don't know about you, but I came to praise the Lord. And if you make me pull this up this hill by myself, don't you get in when we go down the other side. When we began to see the Lord working in this church, when we first began, Sister Arlene and, and Sister KT and I and Nancy, and I don't think there's anyone else here who was here then, but let me tell you something. We knew that in our hearts, God could do anything but fail. We had the confidence to believe that God could build his kingdom. We had the faith to believe that God was going to continue to build. And all we had to do was just sow the seed. And there's been many a seed watered with tears. And some of those who are sitting in this room right now, your lives have been watered with tears because God had to work in your lives to bring you to a place where you can say, Ah, Lord God, Ah, Lord God, greater than all kingdoms, greater than all things, Ah, Lord God, my kingdom Savior. And I looked at that setting of scriptures and I realized another thing. He who sows sparingly is going to reap sparingly. But he who sows abundantly, it didn't say that it grew, did it? Read it. It doesn't say it grew. It said he was sowing the seed. Some fell on good ground. Some in different areas. But he kept sowing the seed. Kept putting it out there. But he had an idea. He had a desire. And the desire was that he would receive a crop. The people who don't want the rain are the people who aren't sowing seeds. They don't need the rain. Oh boy, if that don't sink into your spirit, nothing will. If you're not sowing seed, you don't need rain. But pour out the rain, Lord, pour out the rain. Well, what if I fail? What if you don't? Well, what if I'm missing God? What if you're not? Well, I just, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Well, what if you are? Keep sowing. Keep putting it out there. Keep throwing it to them. Put it on the field. For we know that the field is becoming white under harvest and the reapers, hello, are few. We need more out there doing God's will in our, our communities. There's a people today, and I look at it more and more when I'm watching on the net and stuff, and they're so far gone from what God desired for man. And man is trying to create man and he's trying to create different things. And they're playing with nature. They're pray playing with God's ways and God's total intelligence. And they're trying to change our weather patterns and they're trying to do this and they're trying to do that. And now we have them. They're going to bust the, the atoms and they're going to... Church, they're doing things that you can't even imagine they could do just because they can. You know what? I can jump off a cliff just because I can. And it's not the falling that's going to kill me. It's the sudden stop. <laughs> so I think my intelligence says, let's not jump off the cliff just because we can't. Let our community and our society realize just because we can do things, not all things are expedient. And we don't need to do those things. And uh, uh, my brother 
uh, and Gino was telling me about a place uh, over in Switzerland and uh, and they were building this great big circle machine and I can't remember the name of it and it went off track you want to know why because a mole burrowed through and ate the wires yeah that's exactly what we said maybe someday man will get a clue you can't play with the things you know nothing of God created you and I to love the Lord he who sows to the flesh reaps of the flesh. He who sows of the Spirit reaps of the Spirit. He who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. But he who sows abundantly, abundantly shall he reap. God has a law. It's called the law of reciprocity. We know it as, how do we used to say that? Help me, Nancy. <laughs> what comes around goes around. Thank you for that help, hon. I appreciate it. <laughs> yep. But we have a law of reciprocity. What we give unto the Lord, you give back. Now, I've heard people say that God gives it back. If you sow money, God gives it back money. Uh, I've seen them say, if you send me $10, you'll get 100 back. How many of you remember the days when that was the big fad? And then, of course, the next fad was, let's quack like ducks and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make to you is very clear today. What you're sowing is very important it's important to you it's important to God it's important to your children it's important to your children's children it's important to your boss it's important to your wife or your husband it's important to your extended family it's important to your church what you sow if you want a friend be a friend well, nobody loves me. Nobody comes to see me. And you call up and say, hey, how you doing? Can I come by right now? No, not really. <laughs> they forget about that one. As a pastor, what you need to do is just sort of write them down, and when they say it the next time, go, look. <laughs> But you know what? I don't need a visitation from somebody to stay Christian. Hello? I need a visitation from the Holy Ghost who gives me strength and, and, and helps me to understand the Word of God more clearly and helps me to understand that the ways of man are not always right. The ways of our laws are not always right. But I'd rather be a God pleaser than a man pleaser. And that makes me, guess what? A terrorist. <laughs> well, because I don't believe all of the things that are being done by men are right, that makes me a terrorist. But the things of God, that shall us and keep us. Now, I'm not asking you to eat dry lumps of poison. Okay, I'm not asking you to go out and do some funky thing. What I'm trying to tell you is quite clearly this. Please, God, with your life, reach out to God. And don't worry, you'll gather enough enemies as you go. Don't worry, they'll come. And they may come from where you never expected it. But the most important thing is to realize that if you know you're doing the will of God, don't back off. If you know it's the Holy Ghost, don't apologize. Hello? 
I've heard men who think they'll lose their credibility with their congregation because they don't believe that they should pray for somebody because they may not get well. Wow. What does that do to your heart? I don't want to be in the congregation. If he's worried about his reputation and can't believe that God has a great reputation, excuse me, I'd be in the wrong church. Hello? I believe that God can do anything but fail. And I try to tell you this, put feet to your faith. And let God do the work for you. He called upon us to reach out to the lost. To reach out to the possessed. To reach out to those who are mentally harmed. To reach out to those who are hurting. Reach out to those that are sick. Reach out to those that are in jail. Reach out to those who are homeless. Reach out to those who have not. And when you reach out to them, all of a sudden, they have. Because you sowed the seed. Now in your own personal life, let me share this. There's times you have sown things and all you could do is pray, God, can I have crop failure, please? <laughs> God, this was not a good seed I sowed here. Please, crop failure? You know, drought? That would be a good thing, God. But then you've sown things and you said, God, let it rain. And you fall on your knees and you begin to weep. And when Zion travails, how many of you know what the word travail means? When she gives birth. As a woman with child, she's giving birth. They say that when a woman gives birth to a child, it's the closest to death you come without dying. I don't know, but I can probably imagine that's really true. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm glad I was raised a boy. <laughs> oh, my, my wife said that you are one. I are one. And I, I, I plan to remain such, <laughs> no matter what society says. But we love the sinner and hate the sin. But when we come to that place in our prayer life where we say, God, we need you, and you feel it deep within your soul, deep within your heart, that there's nothing you can do but reach out with all that you've ever been and ever will be. Reach out with every ounce of energy you have and you leave it all on the field in prayer. That's when Zion's travailing. Church, when you travail, you will reap. Because you've sown with God. Stand with me. Well, I only have three more pages of notes. <laughs>